All right. We're live with Ian Lacey, the man that biked all the way from Alaska to Argentina. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Not too bad. A little bit a little bit tired from running around on the bike all morning in town, but uh, yeah, no, not, uh, not too bad at all getting settled back into was normal life again and, and reality, uh, which is very hard to deal with, but I'm, I'm slowly getting there because I'm, I'm just back about a month and a half now. Yeah, I can understand that. It, it takes a lot to, to readjust because, like, what little touring I did in, in California is, like, it was, you know, across the state. I mean, you, you did this for 15 months. It only, I only did it for about a, a month and a half or two. And so, um, I mean, just, and, and you, you were alone, correct? Yeah, I I started with another guy from Denver, uh, who I because I was living over in Denver before I started the trip, and so we got three months under our belt into into Vancouver, and then we split up and met up one more time. But for the last year at least, I was I was completely alone. So yeah, it's still it's still a, a considerable length of time to to spend with uh, just one person, which is me, and I just get get comfortable in your own skin and uh, dealing with. With everything that's thrown at you day after day, but I, I much prefer it on my own. I, I would always recommend it as the way to travel, and not necessarily a a disappointment if 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 you are traveling with someone and you split up because anything over a few weeks, you know, it can it can get hard. But the majority on my own is is the short answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I like I, I thought it was maybe the hardest part because some people, you know, they talk to me and they say, um, is what's the hardest, you know, hardest part about it, and, and I say, like, well, it's not really the, the physical aspect of it or any of that. It usually has to do more with the logistics of it and also just, like, the sort of lonely kind of feeling you get where you, uh, you're not around anybody, or even if you are with people, you're just kind of on the bike, you know, however many hours a day, and you don't have, you know, that contact necessarily, especially if you're alone. Yeah, no, that's it. I, from the moment that we decided to split up, like, first of all, there's a great comfort in having somebody else there, even if it's just the physical presence. And when you know, when we landed in Alaska to, to start the whole thing, it I can imagine what it would have been like if it was just me without anybody else. I you know, I might have wanted to turn around and get on the plane and go home again. But the comfort of having somebody else there, it makes that a lot easier. And, you know, when we split up after three months, it was back on your own again and every decision you made you only had yourself to blame if it went wrong and you know if it, if it goes right well you know that's that's excellent but you do make bad decisions sometimes and so that's when it's nice to have somebody else but on the whole I think you kind of nowadays you know with Skype and even even things like this you know Google Hangout it, it's easy to get in contact with people and you I was never more than well 10 days yeah about 10 days away from any sort of internet connection and people would pass by that you could you could stop and have a chat. But the other great thing about bicycle touring is that if, especially outside of the States, Canada, and, and even Mexico to a certain extent, but people are so surprised to see you passing through their village or their, their townland or whatever that they, they are so interested, they'll just stop you straight up on the road. And the biggest thing is actually trying to move in, in, in those countries from Central America down to the bottom because people take such an interest that they're literally standing in front of you in the road wanting to talk. So loneliness, loneliness, I suppose, only it only really occurs at at those points where you're you're in a very wild area. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I think it's um it's 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 incredible because uh, yeah, people don't expect you to see you. Uh, um, even like in a more developed country like America, they're just like, well, what are these people doing? And you know why you know why are they going across this long distance on a bicycle? And uh, I think it has to do with, um, you know, and, and also another thing is that you really understand the, um, the, the, I guess, the kindness and, like, generosity of your fellow man because um, people, people are willing to help you um, very, you know, they're very willing to help you, like, the uh, way they can. I mean, and that's, that's something that, like, a lot of people take for granted, you know, in the, in the everyday sort of hustle and bustle of, like, normal life from the 9 to 5. You know, you, you feel kind of... Um, like everyone else is, uh, you know, just doing their thing, but really, we're really kind of connected in a way, and like um, they understand, they have some empathy to your situation. They want to, you know, they they realize you're a strange, a stranger in a strange land, and you know, they want to, they want to show you hospitality. So it's really, it's really neat in that in that regard. But um, yeah, so so you, how how far was it that you cycled? It was about. It was. It, let me give it to you in miles. Works, I think. There, uh, seven, seven, seventeen thousand and six miles actually, and it was twenty-seven thousand three hundred kilometers. So, um, it was. It 
I mean, the journey could have been made considerably longer, could have been made a lot shorter as well, but I had a sort of notion not to take public transport as much as possible. Um, so I, I, I just got over the 17,000 that I originally planned. That is, that is amazing. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I watch some of the videos, um, and anybody, if, if they're willing, they can watch the video on uh, on the website. And, and I'm I'm glad to post it. I'm I'm glad for you to, that you've made it. Um, it's uh, it took it took you about 15 months. Is that right? Yeah, it was 15 months from top to bottom. And um, I mean, in the middle, I had about one month off the bicycle. Uh, so yeah, it was it was 15 months in total. But and, and 452 days, but I suppose I, out of those, I, I would have cycled maybe 300, 320 in total. So, I mean, it's a long period of time, and I cycled about two thirds of every month. Um, so, I, what would that make? It a, yeah, I cycled about two thirds of every month, and, and the last third was kind of uh, for, for rest and stuff that you definitely needed. Sometimes a week off in places, sometimes one day, and sometimes I, I'd cycle 20 days in a row. It all depended on, on where I was. Yeah, I mean exactly. I think I think I, I uh, when I did it, um, the most I rode is I mean you know depending on your mileage, um, if you're going 50 or 60 miles through some mountain, you know like with some significant climbing, I mean you want to take a break because like after four or five six days of riding every day all day, um, it, it kind of gets to you. Well, you really don't have that that power until you get like a rest because it's so uh, it just it just um, works on you, you know, and. Um, I don't know. Like you have to, you have to have those those times like in between where you just kind of get yourself together, right? Yeah, I think it, it physically and mentally, I suppose it it pays off because you know if you cycle 12, 13, 14 days, even if you cycle five days in a row, your your body does wear down. You you eventually feel that you won't be able to push those last ten miles that you used to be able to do. You know, but then again, that's where you tie in stuff like nutrition, staying hydrated, and um, all those important basic things that that sort of keep you going um, the whole time. But as well mentally, it's kind of good because often I set myself targets of this town or get 500 miles done in, in a certain length of time. And so those small targets are what got me through the trip, but also the days off were what I was, what I was pushing for so I could get off the bike and just enjoy it, rest up for however long that I needed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you need that time, yeah. Um... So, but like you, like you said, so I guess that, that kind of leads into my next question is um, what, uh, like what advi advice would you give someone that's, you know, looking to, to do a bike tour that's never done one before? I mean, you, you would be the authority on that. <laughs> um, what advice would I give? I could, I'll, I could give so much advice. I suppose I'll try and cut it down to the most important stuff. And, and that is if, if you're going to, if you're going to jump in to do any sort of bike tour, whether it's one week or it's a month or it's something like I did, say it's a year, um, it's it's definitely a mental preparation. I always say that this journey was one that was it was born in the mind, and it's kind of, it's kind of where you finish it as well. The physical side, even if you're not fit enough, I I rarely cycled before I left, and although it would have been more of an advantage to have cycled, I think the fact that I you learn like you learn as you go, you get fit as you go. Um, that, that, that was something that will come to most people, but mental preparation is really the most important. Thinking about the environment, thinking about the places you're going to see, getting used to, even just getting used to sleeping in your tent. If you have you know, enough space in your garden, throw the tent out there, sleep out there a couple of nights a week. Get used to the feeling of you know, the cold, the sun coming up, uh, even cooking on a stove. It's, it can be a big shock when you jump from what well, was out of the, the armchair and, and onto the bike or into the tent. And if, if you limit the, the difficulty or that shock by just practicing bits and pieces as you go, the, the, the most basic things, like like I said, sleeping in the tent, that's kind of what's most important. But also getting good gear and having good bicycle parts and, and that sort of stuff is, is also paramount because it limits frustration. Yeah, I mean, I think um, what you're saying is, is that, like um, nutrition's big, but like really like what, I, what we had already said before is that mental preparation is, is huge. Because you really, um, like I say, like people are always worried about the physical part of it, but it's really more of a mental thing. And like I say, like there's people that are, you know, not in the best of shape, and they start bicycle tours, and they and they do really well, um, you know. And it's not so much about um, how fit you are as much as like how how much of mental preparation you have. So yeah, definitely, yeah. it's one hundred percent the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as, as far as um, I guess, like you, you took you took a lot of equipment with you, and you had to uh, for the for the duration. Um, what 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 are some of the stuff you could uh, bring with you if you're if you're doing like a tour? 
Um, the most important things are, it, it, it depends on which way you want to go about the tour, but I, I assume most people will will want to sleep outside at some point, whether it's in a campground or it's uh, in a state park or something like that, if, especially if you're touring in the States, which is a good idea if anybody hasn't done a tour outside their own country. It, it's really to start at home. So the, the most basic things are where you're going to sleep. So I, I took a two-man tent. It was an MSR Hubba Hubba tent, which is... You know, it's it's one of the it's one of the better ones. It's quite airy and it's also got a lot of space and enough room in the was the two vestibules, I suppose, that you can throw all, all your gear at night, so it's it's visible to you. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. I, I had that trouble. Um, I went in the hard way. Uh, I was in. Um, I had just come out of Big Sur in California. I don't know. You, did you take the coastal route? Oh, it's spectacular, God! Yeah, I don't talk to me about. I want to go back immediately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I met all kinds of people from all over the the. You know the world in Big Sur, and it's it's a really pretty place. Um, they you know they visit from everywhere, and uh, I, like I had gotten through it, I didn't I didn't think I that I would need to, but I put I didn't put my uh, food inside my tent uh, or anything else. You know the raccoons got to it in yeah. the middle of the night. I had to wake up and and feel like what is that sound? And oh, it's uh, it's the raccoons. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big problem out there. Proper yeah, problem. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine like um, you know, somewhere it's not it's it's fairly developed. I mean, uh, you know, you go somewhere like in South America. I mean, it's hard to say what could get into your tent. You know. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. And there's also the threat of um, it's even for your bicycle and your bits and pieces. Apart from food, it's your clothes and all the valuables. If you're going on a long tour, if they're inside, nobody's really going to go near them. It's, even if you chain your bicycle to your tent, to the tent poles, it's a deterrent for some people to think that they can just take it at night time. Right, yeah, I mean, it, you have to you have to take measure of that. Actually, um, that happened to me, um, and it was it was a terrible thing. Like, I, I had gone to um, San Francisco, and I'd only been on the, off the plane a few hours, and I was looking for a place to stay, and um, I, I had locked my bike up. It wasn't a very good lock, and uh, yeah, no, that thing was completely gone. Luckily, I had all my gear with me. But I had I had to I had to get another bike um, in San Francisco uh, just because you know because I had to you know I had to start the tour and I had exactly, no bicycle yeah. so <laughs> and that's just pro that's really bad looking. I know I don't look at home when you, you think about it because like maybe like uh, I mean the bike is a tool and if you don't have it I mean like and you're there you don't have any way to to get around or anything I mean you're really just some guy with a couple of bags you know yeah that's it well it's, it, it, it really makes you look like a hobo really <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's so it's so hard to guard against. Sometimes you can be you can be completely unlucky, but other times, you know, if you take if you take every precaution, um, you possibly you you feel that you can, and there's sort of no regret if it gets taken. At least you can't look at yourself and go, I didn't do anything about it. Right, exactly. You have to. Yeah, I mean, you 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 have more power than you really think because I mean, doing a tour like this, you can you can really get a sense of what you're capable of. I mean, a lot of people don't don't get that chance, so you know, it's good. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta be on guard. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, yes, that's I guess that's another question I have for you is um, logistics. Like how how did you um, how did you plan the tour out? Like I mean, did, did you have a guide or did you did you plan out the route entirely before you did it? Or um, I knew I knew the general sort of route that I was going to take, but it, it's so hard to to plan. The, the easiest area is to actually. Uh, nail down and say this is where I'm going. We're in Alaska, Canada, and the U.S. Because, you know, in the U.S. at least, the Adventure Cycling Association has these great maps of the coast, and they're they're just they they avoid all the traffic, and that's what you want to follow. If you're if you're going north south, like uh, like I was, I, I wanted to follow the coast. It's it's a it's a lot different, you know. And Big Sur and these places are are obvious areas to follow. But apart from that. All you can sort of do is is get good quality maps, ones yeah. that show a little bit of topography on it, so you know maybe if you're going into a mountainous area. Um, there's also other websites you can check, like bike bikeroutetoaster.com, which which give the gradient and, and and these sort of things, so you have an idea of what you'll be riding over, just to plan from getting town to town and what you're capable of. With good maps, relying on the advice of local people. And trying to just visit as many interests, there's loads of ways you can combine the Lonely Planet guidebooks with with reading Wikipedia to reading other people's blogs. There, there's so many ways. But often the the most fun is if you're kind of just at the crossroads and there's sort of options both ways. You just you, you just go whichever way you sort of you just <laughs> feel. You know, it, and that happens uh, more times 
more times than not, you'll, you'll find your way back if you're trying to get to a specific area. It just it depends on time and everything you're trying to get back for to. Right, yeah. I mean, I found that um, you're fine as long as you, um, you know, you get to somewhere where you can you can rest for the night and, you know, have something to eat and, you know, all that sort of thing. Like, I mean, that's the biggest thing because uh, if you don't, um, that's that's really your only concern. I mean, if you do a couple extra miles, especially in your case, um, you know, you'd rather not climb up a massive mountain that you didn't need to, but I mean, if you, yeah. if you do, then that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And you gotta, being, being prepared like that is, is, is what's important. And it's, it's not the end of the world. It's not. That's why if you do have a tent and you have, you have enough food for a couple of days, enough water, water before sun goes down, you find the place. Or you, you ask somebody, can, can you camp in their backyard? I sit in so many, you know, uh, police stations, fire stations, and these, these things too, because there were there were no chance of really getting or, or paying for expensive accommodation in, in some areas. But you eventually get the hang of it with the combination of, of loads of those tools. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I uh, did, so did you did you stay with many people or did you do more camping? Uh, I mean, I'm sure it changed uh, throughout the trip. But... Yeah, I, I most it was mostly camping, especially in especially the beginning of the trip. You know, there's a lot of space in Alaska and Canada. U.S. as well, there's such a great connection of, like I mentioned, state parks down the, down the west coast, so they were great, and it was the hiker, biker, $5 a night sort of job in those, but then after that, Central America gets quite crowded, and it's a little bit more, it's, it's more difficult to find actual places to stay, because somebody will always see your tent, so I stayed inside a lot in, in little hotels, uh, people's homes as well that offered rooms, maybe three dollars, four dollars a night, and you get a shower. It's it's cheap, you know. When you consider what you're spending on your, your money on, you can live on about seven, eight, sometimes ten dollars a day once you get to Guatemala and further on. And but it varied the whole time, you know. When when I felt like a bit of comfort, I stayed inside, and when I when I wanted the wild, I was out. And in between, it was public services like the, like the police and, and like the fire stations because they're public services so they would allow you it was their job as was is to protect uh, to protect people and well, you're you're another person passing through yeah. so I just sleep on the floor inside there and sometimes in a bed too the hospital the, the generosity was incredible yeah I mean it, it's I mean but I think a lot a lot of people once they go south of the border it's really intimidating for them for whatever reason you know they've heard all these different stories and um, it's really not like um, they say it is and and I think it's uh, another thing is that uh, you you like you, you mentioned um, the financial part of it all like uh, it's really really cheap to, uh, to bike tour if you do it right like I mean you, you your biggest expense probably is is water right or, I mean not water but uh, food you have to yeah. I mean, it, it, you don't spend that much money in, in uh, places to stay. You you just you know it's mostly food because you're burning all the calories. That, you know exactly. If you were, I mean, depending on how how would you say it? Depending on how immensely brave you are, you could really just spend money on food, and, and that would pretty much be it. Even for water, you can you can get that. You, you know, there were rarely days where I just couldn't find a place to provide fresh drinking water. It, you know, if you have a, a, a filter as well, you can just take it right from the rivers, just about anywhere. But food is the big expense. Food is the one that is most important to you and, and you need it. But you can sleep outside as much as you want. Or, or oh, the, the, the best rule is you spend your money on food and you stay, stay outside as much as possible. So if you are on a small budget, you can decide then to spend that extra little bit of money on a comfortable night or two in a city or in a town. Right, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, just uh, being able to absorb where, where you are, you know, you want to see a few things. I mean, he has some great, great footage uh, in, the, in the videos. I mean, you know, he climbed to the top of the mountain in, uh, in, uh, in um, Colombia, right? The, uh, uh, which city was it? The... I'm trying to think which one it was. Um, there was loads. There were a good few in, in the Andes. It was from all the videos. I even forget which one is which now at the minute. Um, but yeah, there. I mean, there were loads, and there's loads of options to actually stay in in, in certain places. But it it just depends what you like. You know, some people they want to go on a couple of weeks tour, and the idea is they want to they want to do their cycling, but they want to stay comfortable too. So it's okay to stay in motels or hotels. Others like a mix of one or the other, and there's also a great service for touring cyclists called Warm Showers. I think it's .org, and it's basically couch surfing for for bicycle tourists that they've got a place to stay absolutely anywhere, and that works throughout the world. You can just call in on somebody whose home is there and get to sleep inside more often than not. Yeah, it's, it's an incredibly uh, 
useful resource. I mean, I used it when I when I did it too. And I mean, you meet like a lot of people. What happens is uh, with that service, you know, you meet other tourists, and so they know where to go and what to do, and you know how what route you might take, you know, or whatever. And uh, you know, it's really valuable information in, in you know in a tourist position. So you want to know that. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, that's right. So I guess um, you know we're 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 rolling right along here. It's, it's taking a little. I mean, we're going through it. So uh, um, I wanted to know about um, the uh, association that you you did you did this whole thing for. Um, sure. Can you, can you tell me more about it and how it all worked? Yeah. So the the, the the well the idea behind everything was I wanted to do a bike tour first of all, and then I thought I I tie a charity into it because. It was important, I suppose, not to do, do just something just for myself, but also for others. So the, the, the association that I decided to raise money and awareness for were called the, the Carers Association of Ireland. And it's, I think, um, on, on, your, on you guys' side of the water, it would be caregivers, I think, basically. We call them like family carers, and there'd be caregivers over there. So it's right. a family member who, say if somebody's sick, it could be an elderly person, a sick child, so anybody that's got a, a problem that they need constant care, usually a family member is the one that it falls back on to, to look after them. So it's an association that provides support to Irish family carers to, you know, to give them some, some time off during the day, help train them into the, the right way to care for somebody, and also advocating to get them better services from the government, such as you know, a, a better allowance weekly because they usually have to give up work. And also, a, a person on the end of a phone or in a in, in a centre in, in a local town, so somebody can say, "I'm having a hard day. This is really tough. I need to talk to somebody." And it's important because, you know, Ireland has a population of around uh, four. I say it's now it's around four million people, but so many of those, you know, up to two hundred thousand, if not more, people are family carers. That's a huge amount of people that are in the home looking after somebody or in a part-time job. So it was. Was it was a great thing to be able to support them through this and, and get in the national media and local media and just raise as much money and, and raise their public image as they travel. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how did you how did you raise that money? Was it uh, like how did you? That's uh, it's, it's it's a really it's a tough one. It's never easy to raise money now. I think uh, world over, it's hard for people to give. Times are tough for a lot of. For a lot of people, and so you've got to get really creative if you do want to raise the money. The the big one for me, I thought, would be sponsorship. So I hope that somebody will come on board. They, I could put a name on a jersey. I could, I could, you know, take photos with the jersey on, uh, film a documentary, all of this, and it would, would work out. But that never happened. So it it got back to the local community and and also the national one as well. So I did I did a lot of radio interviews during the year where. I called on people to donate through the website to the Carers Association if they felt like this was something that they could that they could uh, believe in, something that they that they they knew that their support was going to make a difference. And it went from everything to, you know, packing grocery bags in the local supermarkets to um, table. I'm not sure what she called table quizzes. What was the table quiz? Like a pub quiz or whatever. All these <laughs> these, these sort of are uh, trivia nights. Um, so this sort of stuff, the small nuts and bolts, basic stuff that raised the money and that's really what what got us got us through in the end. But I I had hoped that a sponsor would be would be something we could take on board. Somebody that would donate maybe ten cents from the sale of one product over and over and, and, and bring that total right up. So it was it was hard and it was communication was it was an important thing. Trying to tell people trying to not even tell them, trying to connect with them on the same level to, to show them that this is something that probably has affected you, is or or will affect you in the future. Absolutely. I mean, I would I would definitely say that. Um, and I thought, and I read about the cause a little bit, and you know, it seems like one of the best causes to do. I mean, I think, um, you know, generally, I mean, the world, uh, especially in more developed countries, like uh, there's there's more old people that that need care. You know, like I mean, everyone has a you know grandma or grandpa or or what, whatever you want to um, uh -huh. you know that needs that help, and uh, it, you know, it's it's. It's hard in the lifestyles we have today to really um, to provide that. I mean, people, you know, especially in America, that you you know the nuclear family uh, thing, you know, like you move away from your parents, and so it's yeah. really uh, it's difficult. And, and um, so I think it's like a, it was an excellent you know cause to to raise money for. I mean, you know, everyone like you say, everyone everyone knows someone that that you know needs that sort of thing, and uh, you don't want to. Um, 
you don't want to have those people in a in a nursing home necessarily. I mean, that's not the you know anybody would say that that's not a yeah. It's not a really good place to be. So it's exactly um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there you go. Uh, and um, so so tell me what what what's on the horizon? I want to know more about uh, you know what what's in the future for you. Uh, for it's, it's 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 hard to know now. It feels a little bit of a haze since I came back trying to figure that out. I'm 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 not quite. I you can't. You, once you're off the bicycle, you've never gotten rid of the the addiction. I find you probably know it yourself as well, Joe. But it's it's sure. it's hard. Every you know sometimes I'm walking around here and I think God, I just I just gotta get out on the bike. It's hard. It's like it's it's in your system always in your mind. And so I don't know. I'd like to do another big tour. But right now, that's that's not feasible. Maybe in the future, I'd do something. But a lot of small ones in between around Europe, and before I consider anything. But I'm I'm trying to write a book, or I'm just trying to get down memories of of the trip. First of all, in a in a in a different format than than others, I think, as opposed to just saying telling stuff in a linear Alaska, Canada, U.S. the whole way to the bottom sort of thing. Just the main thoughts, the main experiences, and themes of the of the journey, and get those down in a in a way that at, at least for me that I can read back in the future. And if I feel when I've finished it that it's worthy to try and publish it, I, I suppose that's what I'll do. So that that's my main uh, my my main uh, project at the minute. That is, that is excellent. I mean, I think it's, um, that would be that would be great. I would I would look forward to to that uh, if you if you do if you do try to publish it. It'll be Amazing! I think anybody ought to read it, um, especially if you're, you know, trying to be a bike tourist. And uh, exactly, yeah, that's, um, that's your thing, that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, I mean, and that's great. Like I, I understand what you're saying with, um, you know, cycling, especially. I find that uh, touring um, on a bicycle is probably one of the most infectious things that you can do. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's it's very it's very addictive. Like you you really get a um, there's a there's a lot that you get out of it, and uh, you really want to continue it and um, do it more. And you, you know, it's it's it's. Um, I always joke with people, it's a disease. You know, you just kind of you get you catch it and yeah. it goes away a little while, but then it, it comes back again, and you have to you have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does get it get into you. It's one. It's hard to shake it because you see the world at a very different pace, at a more realistic pace than oftentimes you will as a. As a as a tourist, as opposed to a traveler, or even as a backpacker, you go to places where the tour bus doesn't stop, and that's what makes it great. Absolutely, yeah. It's um, you see more than you ever would on any bus or car, or uh, you know, like you say, even um, you know, with the with a guided tour, you're gonna see every everything. You know, some things you might not want to see. <laughs> You'll yeah, see exactly. It too. <laughs> so it's yeah. um, so you really get the full experience, and um, I think that that's you know pretty pretty valuable. You know. Oh, very much so. Especially, yeah. especially in a country you've never been. So. Oh yeah, uh, that's that's it. Like that's that's the best thing to do. It's it's nice to start at home, but if you can get abroad and try it, it's even better. It opens your eyes up, um, big time to to the realities of the world. I suppose the way people live. Yeah, you start to understand. Uh, you know, you're not the only person. Uh, you're not the only country. You know, it's it's a very much a global uh, uh, environment we live in. So. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and um, let's see, I mean, I, I, do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, do you, um, <laughs> I suppose for me, I'd uh, I'm trying to figure out. Like, I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, provide any updates that I could do, I suppose, in the, in the future, because I'm trying to redevelop my website at the minute. To, uh, like, there's no gallery of photos on it at the minute. The, the videos are kind of all over the place, mostly on Facebook. I'd love to. I suppose be able to provide you guys with. The opportunity to throw stuff on the website and also me to like share the information that you generate and the stuff you put on. Um, so I'd hope that could be possible. That, um, down the road. I mean, I mean, if, if you, any anything on the website that you feel like um, you know is valuable, definitely definitely share it with everyone. And um, and if if you do another tour or you want to write um, any any blog posts, I mean, I I think you know you'd be surprised the amount of people that would really love to read about. Um, you know, if if you wanted to write like you know a paragraph here or there, or you know just a couple of pictures here here and again, I mean I think that you know, people would be like, wow, this is this is really something, and it, it might even inspire them to to do something on their own. Exactly, yeah, and also like your website as well. It's a, it's a good thing, like it says in that. So the tagline for it as a as a community of people to share as well. It's really it's properly important. So the amount of people that you have feeding into it more. Um, is obviously better that even of those. It's, it's you know you can probably help others get on a bike if they're afraid to do it, and those who've already done it can 
can learn about what they what they want to do next. Whether it's even if it's just bike racing or if it's bike touring or anything that's that revolves around the bike, which is the greatest mode of transport. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like to agree with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's the main thing that I, I focused on when I when I came up with the idea. Started, I, I really wanted to experience people to teach you know um, new people um, about how how to do how to go about things, and then also really. Um, I find, I mean, you know, you, you did a lot of the tour yourself, but uh, sometimes it's just great to have good friends and, you know, good people to ride with on a, sh on a day ride or, a day, you know, um, different, you know, times that you want. I mean, it, it just makes it a lot easier sometimes to do, especially oh, yeah. people that, um, you know, are just starting you know, picking up the bicycle for, for the first time. It's, it's just that much more incentive for you to get out there and, and really ride and enjoy yourself. Oh, exactly, yeah, and that's... Yeah, that's what it's what it's about. And it's good as well. The weather the weather over there is far better than it is here, so there's more chance to get get out and actually cycling. I can't move half of the week because it's, <laughs> all the rain comes down. So that's where it's good to be able to read on those days off about what you're going to do on on the other ones. And it's nice to see, even if I don't know for gear, well, like bicycle gear reviews and and and, and equipment that that might be important as well to see. Um, if if a lot of that could be uh, would be on the website, I'm not sure. Do you have big plans to like expand stuff? Because I didn't know what say just from bicycle touring's point of view. I uh, as opposed to the rest of it, I never really knew what was appropriate, what was the right stuff to take with me, the stuff that would actually work. And it'd be cool to have a place where you could you could you could read the experiences and read the the yeah the experiences of others with equipment and and bikes and stuff that could that could help out there. Right, I mean, like, like I say, right now, um, it's it's one of those things. Like, um, I'm st I'm still going through college. I'm about to finish, uh, and so I, I'm really getting the hang of all this. Like, I'm just now getting um, where I can design the website, uh, much less, uh, you know, populated with finished content. And that's why I, that's what's so great about it. Hopefully, is that um, with a clear message, um, people will understand that they, you know, they really have the power to add anything they want. Like, anyone can add any photos or videos or or blog posts or, or discussions or anything. So um, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, in a sense that um, there's like a it's just a freedom of like you know uh, a free market of ideas. You want to yeah. because I really don't want to um, inhibit you know anyone in any way. As long as you know you, you're willing to provide any content at all, I think um, it's valuable to someone you know more than you think. I, I feel like people just kind of uh, feel that they what they have to say isn't necessarily important, or their picture isn't really. You know, you know, up to par with the, you know whatever, and so I guess it's sort of daunting to to be someone stumble across the uh, you know the website on the internet and be like, oh well, uh, you know, I must be pretty important to do you know to use this thing. No, definitely not. I mean, anybody, even like a person that just bought a bicycle and you know they they're riding you know to work. I, I want to hear from them too. So yeah, no, definitely. I think that's that's important. I hope that hope you can get like this is a great idea. I think it'd be it, it's good to get as many of these. As possible, to talk, talk to people from a range of um, bicyc bicycling interests as well. This is stuff that I think people will 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 listen to, and they can they can also see firsthand, uh, you know, how um, as opposed to just in in text, how how someone reacts to um, telling their story how, or how they tell it as well. It it, it could be just as inspiring as like the the text form. So videos are cool, and that's uh, I'll be I'll be checking back in to see if we can get more of those uh, down the line as well. Excellent. That'd be great. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't wait. And um, um, you know, I really appreciate you being on the, um, you know, doing the interview with me. And um, you know, uh, hopefully uh, we uh, we can try and get together maybe in the future and uh, see if we can uh, work something else. If you do another tour, if I do another tour, we can catch up. Sure. Have you got any plans uh, soon? Oh uh, well, I mean, I'm, I may stay in school a little bit more and learn uh, some, some different design things like media production and, and graphic design and that sort of thing. Um, it's outside of my major that I'm about to finish, and uh, hopefully, uh, the sooner the better. Once once the weather um, gets a little better, it's not so bad now, but it'll get it'll get kind of nasty in January, or February. But but I can't wait. I'll get back out on the bike and, and you know go across the country and South America. You're the man to talk to. South America intrigues me a lot. I really think it'll be interesting. So. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's a good thing for good thing for anybody who just wants that. I don't know that. Brand new experience, I presume. But the world is the world is open to near almost all of the world is open to everybody. Um, so <laughs> I hope uh, I, I hope as many people as possible get out and get out and, and see it. It's about spreading that word. Yeah, yeah, absolutely.
All right. Well, I guess um, you know you got to be going, but uh, but um, um, you know, thanks again. I appreciate it. So thanks to me, Joe. A pleasure to talk to you. Oh, you too. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye bye.